Hello. Good morning. Happy Friday. All that good stuff. Class number two of the Film in Literature series, and today we are doing film vocabulary. And I have some great, great clips to explain um, some different camera shots. So it'll be a fast-paced class, but it'll be a fun one. So fasten your seatbelt. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, Bev. How are you? Hello. Hello, Shane. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. So, um, hello. ooh, that's loud. Um, hi, Victor. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, and Servette, how are you today? Perfect. <laughs> good. Um, I tried to send you the email, Servette, but um, yeah. it came back. I must have written down your email address wrong. So, but that's okay because um, if you go to the class page, there's always going to be a link to the syllabus there, so you can get it from there. So, um, okay. the yeah. So. Um, let's see, um, is it Corentin? Yes. Hey, it sounds like there's an echo coming from you. Do you have, um, headphones? Uh, yeah. no, I don't have a microphone. Okay, I'm going to mute you, um, just because I can hear myself coming from you. So when you want to talk, just go ahead and unmute yourself. So, okay. Okay. I think that's who it was. Yeah. All right. That's better. Um, okay, guys. So um, this is an advanced course. Just to let you know, this is an advanced course. Um, we had this class on Wednesday. It's a progressive course, which means that each class builds off of the next class. So if you did not watch the video from the last class and have not taken a look at the syllabus, you're going to be totally lost. Um, so um, if you feel like you might be that person that's going to get lost, um, feel free to step out and go into the lobby. And because um, there's a number of people in the lobby who have taken the class, um, took the class on um, Wednesday. So um, if you feel like you're going to be lost, no worries. 
Um, just be aware that this is a progressive course, so each class will be building off of the previous classes. So um, today is, um, there's a spot, guys. Um, today we're going to do film vocabulary. This is a film and literature course. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to be going over a bunch of different um, film vocab. I'm going to be showing you some examples, not all examples, some of them you're expected to understand um, just by reading. So um, that's, that's a little bit about the course. Um, my name is Shanae, by the way. I'm from the United States, and um, I live in California. So um, if we could just kind of go around and introduce ourselves. Is it Abdullah? Okay. Um, how about Corinton? You want to unmute yourself and let us know where you're from? Okay. Hello, everybody. So I'm from France, uh, from Lyon, in, in the south of France. Wonderful, wonderful. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. And um, Felipe? Hi, guys. I'm from Brazil, in the south of Brazil, near Paraguay. Nice. Awesome. And Luisa, you made it in. Yeah. All right. Awesome. How are you? Uh, I'm great. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Um, would you like to just let everyone know where you're from? I'm from Armenia. My name is Luisa. I'm a student. <laughs> nice. And Melissa, good to see you. Hi. And would you like to introduce yourself to the class? Yes, hi guys. I'm from Argentina and my name is Melissa. Very good, awesome. And Miguel, you made it in too. Oh no, Miguel oh, has to go. <laughs> you have to leave. Yeah. Oh no, Mauricio. Yeah, I have to leave. Mauricio, here's your oh, chance, my, my friend. Gosh. I'm so sorry. Well, watch the video so that you're up to date on Wednesday. Okay? Yeah, but oh my gosh. I don't want to go. I don't want okay. you to go either. Don't okay. go, Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to, I have to. Oh, okay. no. That's okay. Mauricio. I understand. Mauricio, be ready, okay? Yeah, Mauricio, be ready. Be ready. <laughs> All right. Okay. See you later, Miguel. One, one, two, two <laughs> three. three. Mauricio, jump in, Mauricio. Up. Oh. <laughs> All right. We'll see. We'll see. You. And um, is it RK? RK? Yeah, man. Hi, hi, I am from India. From India. Hi, RK. Yeah, yeah. It's my first class, ma'am. It's your first class? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Colingo or with me? I'm, yeah, with you, ma'am. I'm trying okay. to understand. Yeah. Okay. All right. It, this, yeah, class, this, this class might be a little difficult for you, RK. So, okay. um. If it is, no worries. Just um, hang out in the lobby and watch. So, but welcome to class. Thank you. And Thank Renee, you, so you made it in. What's up, my brother? Uh, so. What's up, Shanae? How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm feeling so sorry for Renee, but or I mean for Mauricio, but I'm glad that you're here, Renee. So um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. And um and Servette. Yes, uh, I'm here again. Good to see yeah. you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. And you, where are you from, Servette? From Turkey. 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 Yes. That's what I thought. Yeah, from Turkey. All right, all right. And Renee is from the beautiful Mexico. And um, Victor. Victor. Hello, everyone. I'm Victor. I'm from Vietnam. That's right, and you're from Vietnam. Very nice. All right, guys, let's get started because, like I said, we have a lot to cover. So, um, and Melissa, yeah, Melissa, there's some like type. I don't know if you're typing, but we can we can hear it. So no worries. Just whenever you want to talk, just unmute yourself. So, 
All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. So last class I introduced you to Breakfast at Tiffany's. And Breakfast at Tiffany's is going to be the film and the novel that we're going to be reading over the next four weeks. So, but today, in order for us to have very good conversations about the film, I need to introduce you guys and get you familiar with film vocabulary. So, um, there is a link to the film vocabulary document um, from the syllabus, but for the sake of today's class, I'm just going to um, share it with you, um, screen share it with you. Um, I'm also going to start by going over what we're going to cover today. Is that big enough for everybody? No. Or a little it's bit bigger? Clear, um, Is that better? Clear. No. No? No, no, no. No. Um, a little more. Is that better? Yes. Yes? More, more better. Okay, good. All right, so we're in lesson two today. So um, today, the description, we're going to learn a number of film vocabulary words and understand their meanings. And um, with time permitting, the class will watch short clips to help enhance the understanding of the vocab. So after class, by the way, this document is available um, on all the class pages. Um, if you sent me your email a couple weeks ago, it's also in your email box, hopefully still. Um, so you can, everything that we do in class, you have access to from this syllabus. So the vocabulary resources here is the document so that after class you can um, look at it. And then below that, these are visual um, resources for film vocabulary that I have pulled. And we're going to be watching a number of them today. Not all of them, but most of them. And then um, after class, I want to go over the homework really quick. Um, become familiar with the opening scene of Breakfast at Tiffany's. Um, I want you to watch it multiple times, probably three or four. Um, take notes on the different video and audio techniques that are used in the opening scene. Um, consider how the opening scene is different from more modern movies that we would watch today. And then I also need you to read or want you to read the first two pages of Breakfast at Tiffany's and think about the following. Um, first of all, whose point of view is the story being told from? How does this differ or does it from the movie? And two, I want you to think about the characters, specifically Holly Golightly and the narrator. The narrator does not have a name in the novel. In the, it's actually a novella. does not have a name, um, as we learned last class. But he does in the film, and that is Paul Bar Barjack. Um, this link will take you to the opening scene of Breakfast at Tiffany's, and this link will take you to the reading. I know I went through that kind of fast. <laughs> is, every, is everybody good with that? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, awesome. All right, so let's start talking about some film vocabulary. Is that big enough for everybody? Yes. Yes? Okay, good. Um, let's see. Um, Corinton, can I have you read the first word in its definition? Yes. So, narrative, uh, an adjective descri describing a film as being primarily a work of fiction, or known that loosely means a fictional story. Yes, perfect. Ooh, where is that coming from? Is it gone? Okay. Yes, so a narrative is um, what we would call any sort of fiction film. So, for example, Breakfast at Tiffany's is a narrative. Um, can I get Melissa? Melissa, can you read the second one for me? Um, okay. In documentary, also an adjective or noun category used to describe a word of nonfiction. Yes, perfect. Yeah, so a documentary would be, you would catch documentaries on TV channels like National Geographic or the Discovery Channel. Um, I'm trying to think of a really famous, I think there was um, 
Oh, wow, I'm really going to date myself. I think this was like the early 90s. There was a very popular documentary called Hoop Dreams. Hoop Dreams. Um, oh, March of the Penguins is a documentary. Um, that's more, that's modern. <laughs> so, um, yeah, good. Um, Mauricio, you're in. Yes, Shanae, good afternoon. Nice hey. to see you. All right. Nice to see you too. I'm Who left? Who did you replace? Excuse me. Who? Oh, Renee's gone. Re yes, she had. She he had. He had um, uh, a trouble with his computer. Oh, and he mm. stole it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad you're here, Mauricio. Um, since you. you're here, Mauricio, can you go ahead and read plot for me? Uh, which which part? Sorry. Plot, the third one. Okay, plot refers to all aspects of the narrative that we see on screen. For example, in the film Jaws, Chief Brody's talking to the town council on screen would be part of the plot. Exactly, perfect. So, um, breakfast at Tiff going back to breakfast at Tiffany's again. Um, it's I don't think it's any big secret that the opening scene of that, um, she is getting out of a taxi and um, eating her breakfast in front of the famous jewelry store Tiffany's and um, that is a part of the plot so anything that happens basically is part of the plot um, that we see happening um, story Louisa can you read story for me yeah. the first few effects of the uh, narrative that we do not uh, see on screen this effect uh, may include events before, during, or even after the plot of the film. In Jones, for instance, uh, Chief Brody had been a police officer in the city prior to the film's beginning. This information is part of the story, but not part of the plot. Perfect, exactly. So, again, going back to breakfast at Tiffany's, an example of that would be something like... Um, we know when she's standing there in the opening scene eating her breakfast that she had to have stopped someplace and bought breakfast um, and that's part of the story but it's not part of the plot because we didn't see it happen. Okay, this next one, this word is pronounced diegesis, diegesis, so um, let's see, Servette, can you yes. read this one for me? Okay, diegesis refers to the narrative that we see on screen. This term is much more specific to film, however, and refers to the world that characters inhabit as much as the plot of the film. The adjective diegetic, for instance, refers to something the characters in the film could perceive, whereas non diegetic refers to something they could not. Yes, perfect. And um, I'm not going to get into too much detail about this, other than you'll understand um, diegetic and non-diegetic much better when we get to the sound part. So um, we'll just hold off on that until we get to the diegetic and non-diegetic sound, and the word diegesis and um, diegetic will become a lot clearer to you. Um, RK, can you read point of view for me? Yeah, point of view. Most people assume films <laughs> always have a third person perspective. But even but when it but even when it does not does not use a POV shot, film often has a more subjective perspective through the use of a camera placement, voice voiceover and other cinema techniques. Yeah, perfect. So we're actually going okay. to um, be looking at this when we get um, down to a, a point of view shot. I have a great um, clip that we're going to watch from that uh, to describe to so we get a little bit more familiar with um, point of view. Um, Victor, can you read Mezzan scene for me? Okay. Oh, it's a difficult word. Yeah. <laughs> Mezzan scene. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's French. French I was going to say it's yeah. French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mezzan scene refers to everything in the frame of the scene, which must include lighting, set, props, and 
the stepping and movement of actors. The term of that is derived from the theater, where it is used in a similar way. In the 1950s, a group of friends created in the journal Cassius du Cinema used this term in a different way. For them, mist and scene <laughs> meant, <Good. laughs> meant a special aspect of cinema associated with certain directors. Eventually, you will want to understand both the meaning of the term the secondary meaning is closely connected to the idea of autism oh, mm -hmm. in cinema. Initially, however, mission scene is the first term. Yeah, good, exactly. So we're going to be, for the purpose of this class, um, and considering that this is this is um, American film, um, we're going to use mesenseme strictly in the first definition. So when we're talking about mesenseme, we would talk about the lighting, the set, the props, staging and movement of actors. So for example, um, something that you would want to think about uh, for next class when you're watching the opening of Breakfast at Tiffany's is what the mezzanine scene is. So what is the lighting? What does the set look like? What props are used? Um, how does um, she move around? What's she wearing? Um, pretty much anything and everything um, is mezzanine scene. Um, Felipe, can you read setting for me? Yeah. Whoops, sorry, there we go. Like the literary term, this word, this word refers to the time and place of the film. The setting for the usual suspects, for instance, is New York and Los Angeles at a time contemporary with the film's year of release, in this case in 1995. Perfect, yeah. So, um... Does anybody, where does breakfast, what's the setting of breakfast at Tiffany's? Where does, where does breakfast at Tiffany's take place? 60s. It was, it was made in 1961, uh-huh, and, and I would, I would agree that the, the, the uh, time in the film is contemporary with the time of the film's release. The book, however, is is uh, is takes place much earlier. The book the book was released in 1958, but takes place in the 40s, early 40s, as a matter of fact. What's the city? Where is Breakfast at Tiffany's? What's the location? New York. New York. Yeah, New York. Gotta love New York. Yeah. Okay. Um, Louisa, <laughs> can you read set for me, please? Yep. Um, this term refers to the actual construction in which the actors are filmed. In the usual uh, suspect, for instance, a set might be the inter inter mm. in interrogation interrogation room in the film. Sets are usually built uh, built for a film uh, for a film as opposed to shooting a location where a screen uh, is shot in the actual place in which it occurs in the film. It film a uh, few shoot on a location in Venetia, uh, Venetia, Italy. For instance, they might actually be shooting the scene in uh, gondolas on the channel. Channel. Canals. Uh -huh. Canals. Yeah. Uh, that is also used generally. However, however, as a uh, 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 De designation? Designation for the place where a film is uh, begins shoot. So even in location shooting, the, the uh, director will be on the set of his or her film every time he or she went to the place where the crew was shooting for the day. Perfect. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, that was good. There's a lot of big words in that one. Um, does anybody have any question about set? Yes, <laughs> Sinead. Go ahead. Uh -huh. uh, what about uh, there are, are there differences between scenario and stage and setting and set? 
are, are similar or are they um, different? Okay, well, a, a scenario is like a situation. So, like, um, for example, the, the scenario in um, Breakfast at Tiffany's is that Audrey Hepburn's character, Holly Golightly, wants to marry a rich man, but she's falling in love with um, this other tenant. That's the scenario. Um, what was the second word that you mentioned? The stage. 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 Okay. Stage is going to be more of a theater term and not not a not a movie term. So okay. on stage, you um, if you're talking, if you want to talk theater terms, you have like stage right, stage left, upstage, downstage. Um, you could, I guess, use that loosely, and actors may or may not. I don't know. I'm not an actor. They may use that when they're on set. Um, to designate where on set for them to move. So if, like, the director says, you know, stage left, and they're shooting in an apartment, for an example, then the actor would move to the left of the apartment. But the apartment is the set. Mm, okay, thank you. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. Like I said, stage is more is more theater, not so much movies. And scenario is something different entirely. That's I would say a, a synonym for scenario would be a situation. So um, mm -hmm. good question. Good question. Um, you want to read prop for me then, Mauricio? <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Prop. Another term borrowed what? from theater. Ah. A prop. Oops. Sorry. A prop is. <laughs> a prop is generally any object on a set, though clearly the objects that characters will touch become more important. A trumpet, for instance, might be part of the backdrop in a music store scene, but if a character is going to play the trumpet, the prop takes on more importance. Yeah, perfect, exactly. Good. Any questions about prop? That's another, that's, yeah, that's something else, um, and I think I already mentioned this, like in part of mezzan scene, when you're looking for homework, when you're looking at um, the opening scene of Breakfast at Tiffany's, notice what her, what the props being used are. Um, costumes. Let's have um, Corentin, uh, let's have you do costumes for me. Yes, so question, uh, what the characters are wearing, uh, bear in mind that even if a character is wearing contemporary clothing, in some cases, the actor's home clothing. That clothing is still considered a costume. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think that that one's pretty clear. Um, okay, now we're getting into the good stuff. Um, let's see, Victor, can you read lighting for me? Okay, lighting. This term refers to the way in which light are used for a given film. Lighting, in conjunction with the camera, that's the video look for the film. But the key light is the main light used for a for scene. Backlight refers to a secondary source usually placed behind the actor. And few field refers to a light placed to the side of the actors. This, this term is called three point lighting and was very common in classic, classical Hollywood films. You may also run across the term low key lighting, which means that film was shot often using only the key light at a very low setting. This low level of lighting creates dark shadows on the faces of actors. And it's particularly moody when used in black and white film. It is most often associated with films noir, but it's, it's not exclusive to that film. Yeah, very good, very good. So we'll talk about lighting. Um, there's some interesting lighting techniques that are used in the opening scene of, of Breakfast at Tiffany's that you might want to pay attention to um, when you're watching that. And um, just as a side note, what got me into film and literature is this word right here, film noir. I took a film noir class in college. It was the first film and lit class I ever took. 
and I was hooked. <laughs> I was hooked after that. So, um, good stuff. Um, let's see. Melissa, can you read um, about shots for us? Yeah. Shot and close up versus long shot. Generally, the smallest units of unbroken film. The camera can move within a shot, but the second that the film makes a transition, see below, to another shot, the previous shot has ended. Alternatively, when used with a certain adjective, shot also refers to the distance from the camera to the subject. Uh, almost always the actor. In a long shot or a wide shot, one can see the entire body of the actor. In a medium shot, one can see the actor from the waist up. In a close-up, one can see only the actor's face. There is no such term as the short shot. You may also see an extreme close-up in a film where you can only see part of the actor's face, just the eyes, for example. Also, another common term is the two shot, which is generally a medium to medium long shot of two actors. Two shots were very common in the classical Hollywood era and continue to be used today. Yes, absolutely. Very good. Um, <coughs> any questions about shots? The one resource um, from that I gave you guys, the one that says this video is a montage of different camera shots, that has that, that one's actually a really good resource um, for for this um, example of the close up versus the long shot and the medium shot and um, so on and so forth. So um, I encourage you to watch. We're not going to be watching that one in class, so that's one that I would recommend you watching at home. Um, Servette, I haven't heard from you in a while. Can you do pan for me? Okay. Pan. The movement of a stationary camera on a horizontal axis. A camera on tripod that moves from left to right following a para para parade. Parade. Parade, for instance, would be panning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, a, a, a camera stays in one spot. This is, we're going to learn a another term in just a second, but so a pan, the camera stays in one spot and moves, just just the camera itself moves from left to right. You're not actually moving it from side to side. That's different, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, Felipe, can you do a tilt for me? The movement of a stationary camera on a vertical axis, a camera on a tripod that moves up and down following a plane landing, for instance, would be performing a tilt. Right. So same thing, just like I was talking about with the pan, the camera is stationary and it just goes left to right. A tilt would be the camera being on on in one spot and just the, the lens moving okay. up and down up and down. Mm -hmm. So, and now we're going to look at that other term, oh, whoops, wrong one, that I was talking about that's different from a pan. Don't get pan and tracking shot confused. Um, Louisa, can you read that one for me? Tracking uh, shot? Yes, tracking shot. Mm -hmm. The moment of the shot when the camera is no longer a uh, face Stationary. The term refers to the track that cameras were once around on when creating one of these shoots. Although a track is still often used with a tracking shoot, the term might also refer more generally to a moving shoot that appears stable, such as a steady cam shoot, which uses. Um, Uh, gy uh, gyroscope to avoid the uh, shake. Mm. Yep, you got it. Shake. Ah, no, I can't. 
Shaky, affects uh, uh, associated with the hand hate shoot. You may also run across the term dolly shoot, which refers to what the camera uh, rests on a platform which wheels uh, while the camera moves in certain kinds of shoots. Daily shoot is oftentimes used in um, interchangeably. Yeah, with uh, tracking shoot, uh, since uh, uh, though is very often used track. Good, nice. We're gonna watch a clip um, of a reverse tracking shot. Um, we're gonna watch it right now, as a matter of fact. Um, this is a reverse tracking shot. So a tracking shot is the camera is actually moving from, you know, it's actually following something. So for example, um, like, I found, I didn't save it, save it I don't think. Hold on one second. Um, it's, it's like someone walking and the camera falling. That's yeah, perfect. Simple. Yeah, that's a great example. Yeah, I was actually going to show you the one I was going to show you was when um, where a girl or a lady is following her. She's she's in a car, and she's got the camera, and the car is moving with her son as as he rides his bike. We're going to look at a reverse tracking shot from a film called Goodfellas. Anybody know Goodfellas? Uh, yeah, Goodfellas, okay. of course. Yeah. With Frank uh, Robert De Niro and uh, uh, Ralph Liotta. Yes, yeah, Ray Liotta, Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta, mm -hmm. Ray Liotta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ray Liotta. So, um, I, Goodfellas is really actually a great film to, to learn film terms. We're actually going to be watching a couple different um, clips from there. Um, I don't think this one has any curse words in it. I know one of the ones I have does. Um, just for, you know, fair warning, um, Goodfellas is not the cleanest language movie. Um, but it's a good movie. So um, this is a reverse tracking. Now, since you know that tracking is falling, what do you think a reverse tracking is? Mm. Reverse tracking. It's like tracking shots uh, backwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what 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 reverse tracking is is where like the main uh, the main people stay in the same place. And the background changes. Oh. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to show you. Um, if can everybody click on YouTube for me? And remember, with YouTube, just don't touch anything. I will be the DJ. Okay, this. This is a reverse tracking shot. So you see Robert De Niro and Ray Liotta. This is from one of the last scenes. And um, you see them in the foreground. We call that the foreground. And then we have the background. They're going to stay in the same place. But the back is all going to change. Um, and that is um, a reverse tracking shot. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so um, not a not a long clip, but just you get the idea of of what a reverse tracking shot is, and uh, so a, a normal tracking shot would be just the opposite of that. We would be following Ray Liotta and uh, Robert De Niro walking, and the back would would change with them. But yeah, so Sorry, is, yeah, I, go ahead, Mauricio. Is it, is it the same uh, effect? Is it is it, is it the same effect? When the, the 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 actors use in certain scary movies, when when the actor is uh, 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 see something and the camera is is going to to the actor, but at the same time the background uh, uh, goes far. Yes, is it the same thing? If 
I, the it, background it, is changed. Like, okay, so I think I know what you're saying. I'm trying to get it like a scary. So, like, the the girl is standing, looking in a direction. I just, I don't know why I said a girl because there's always a, a girl in a scary movie. I guess um, the girl's standing there looking, and the camera is facing the girl, and she's in the foreground, and you can see stuff happening behind her. While yes, she stays, yes. while she stays yeah. in the same place, is that what you're yeah, saying? Yes, yeah, she stays in the same place, but the background uh, gets far. Uh, gets uh, how do you say the word? Uh, That's a little bit different. We're gonna we're we we're gonna keep looking at stuff. I if it. Yeah, that's a little bit different. So, um, hang tight. We're gonna. I think we're gonna. You'll you'll blah, blah, blah. We'll answer that question for you in just a few. So, yeah, um, that's that's more. Um, uh, that is more. What's the word? You might be talking about like the focus, possibly, or um, a fade, or yeah. We'll we'll see. I don't. I don't. I'm not sure. If you can find a clip of what you're talking about, that might help me too. So okay, let me let me look for. Okay, okay. Mm. Let's keep going with this film vocab. Um, RK, can you do me the pleasure of reading a handheld shot for me? Yeah, yeah. Um, handheld shot refers to a shot where the camera is held by the camera operator. Hand, sh hand held shots are often as associated with a certain look which is shaky and the most people associate the hand held shot with a kind of documentary realism. Narrative films and television often use the hand held for this reason as they are able to create a sense of gritty realism. The television show law and order for instance often uses hand held shots and the detectives are questioning suspects to, on the streets giving the viewer the sense that the sense is th that the scene is more real bear in mind however that no one techniques ever has the same remaining same meaning in every film a hand held shot might be used to decrease the sense of realism yeah perfect so um has anybody ever seen the Blair Witch Project or know about it? No. Yes, yes, yes. of course. Okay. That is a, that's, a, that's a really good example where handheld shots are used to create this sense of, of realism when we all know that the movie was fake. So, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, but like this says, bear in mind that all these techniques that we're talking about, just like the just like the English language, um, all these terms, this is just kind of a general guideline for how we use them. Um, it may not be the, the, the case in, in a certain film, depending on what you're looking at. So, um, Corinton, can you do crane shot for me? Yes. So, a crane shot is a shot taken from a crane. You often see these shots at the beginning of a scene, using it as, a, as an establishing shot, or at the end of a scene. The end of a movie, in fact, often uses a crane shot, which sometimes is even more extreme. Right, right. so, so um, a, crane, a crane... Oh, oh. where's that where's coming from? Oh, it's, oh coming it's coming from me, Clinton. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, um, a crane shot um, is well, a crane is one of those big, huge, monstrous, you know, machines, and it's to get a good, huge picture of a scene, which is an establishing shot, um, or to maybe fade out at the end of a movie or at the end of a scene, so that um, you get a sense of closing. So, um, yeah. Um, point of view shots. Can I have Mauricio? Can you read that one for me? POV shot it stands for point of view shot. Oh, what happened? What? 
sorry. No, 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 that's okay. POV shot uh, stands for point of view shot. This type of shot does not refer to the technology used so much as the way we interpret it. In this kind of shot, we are looking through the eyes of a character. You have probably seen a POV shot when a character who has been re rendered unconscious is wa waking. The other characters look directly into the camera in a low angle shot, see below, and say, are you crazy? Are you okay? As the edge of the frame are blurred and the speech has an echo effect. Good. All right. So point of view shot, um, like it says, we interpret POV shots um, more so than, than probably what the um, what the actual technology being used is and we are going to look at a POV um, scene also from Goodfellas. Um, this is a good one. Um, oh gosh, let me hold on one second. You guys are sending me links to look at. I'm not going to look at them right this second but I'm opening them so I can look at them. Um, later. So, okay. Everybody go ahead and click back on YouTube for me. <coughs> okay. This is um, a point of view shot and it does, as you can see by the title, it dissolves into a zero focalized point of view which basically means that we're looking through the eyes of the character for the majority of this and then all of a sudden the character is in in the scene. So um, it's it gets a little complicated. I don't want you to focus so much on how it dissolves into a zero focalized point of view. I don't want to get that technical at this point. I just want you to understand what a, a point of view shot is. So let's go ahead and watch this one. Oh. Remember, don't pause. Okay, no one press anything. I'll do the pressing. Here we go. Okay, so um, everybody get the idea about point of view shots? Goodfellas is a great movie, by the way. If, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that movie. Um, any questions about point of view? No, it's pretty clear. Yeah, okay. Thanks. <laughs> I, tried to, I tried to pick clips that it would be perfectly clear for you. So um, let's keep going with this uh, vocab. I want to try to get through all of them. I don't know if we will. Okay. High angle shot, low angle shot. At this point, just can I get a volunteer to read it? Yeah. Uh, high angle shot and low angle shot. These terms refer to camera placement. If a camera is looking down on an actor from a high vantage, it is a high angle shot. If a camera is placed very low to the ground and looks up at actors, it is a low angle shot. High angle shots might emphasize that characters 
are being overwhelmed by their circumstances, while low-angle shots might emphasize that characters are somehow larger than life. Be, care be very careful, however, when attaching a certain cinema technique uh, to a recurring plot device or tone. There are always exceptions, and you need to evaluate every scene individually. Good. All right. So um, I have um, an example of a um, low angle shot. Um, this is from a very famous movie called Citizen Kane, um, another great classic movie. So um, if you want to go ahead and click on YouTube, I didn't get one for low angle high angle will become quite obvious, so. Okay, this is a low angle shot, and um, you can kind of, um, right now you can see how, what a low angle shot looks like, and how it's, when we watch just this minute, how it, um, uh, Yes, I believe it is Orson Welles, Mauricio, how it portrays characters when you use the camera in this fashion. So let's take a peek. Okay, so what do you notice about um, low angle camera shots? How does it, in, what, how do these men, how do, you, how do you perceive these men by looking at them the way that this camera shot was? To ma magnify them, to magnify them. What do you mean by magnify? Yeah, I don't know well to, well that, that was, Huh? It has taken from the bottom of the floor. Ooh. Yeah, it's yeah, it's taken from. And how does that make these guys look? Yeah. How does it make them look? Higher. Yeah. Bigger. Bigger. Yeah, bigger. Taken from the powerful. You know, it's it's powerful. meant. To, yeah, it's it's meant to evoke maybe, that these these people are very powerful people. Maybe yeah, yeah it's emphasizing them. Mm -hmm. their yes, power, to emphasize their, exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. To emphasize their power, their prestige, exactly. Um, to make them seem intimidating, you know, um, in scary movies a lot, when they film the killer, they'll do it from, you know, a low angle to make the killer look big and scary. And Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, when, the, when the killer is, is looking for the victim. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And then uh, conversely, the, the victim is probably, is a lot of times filmed from a high angle shot so that they appear very small and helpless and weak. So, yeah, exactly. But that's not always, be aware that that's not always like it's said. So, so um, uh, another question. Sure. Sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> uh, in this case, uh, well, Orson Welles is, is the citizen Kane, but is he powerful or the other people or both of, of them? I haven't seen that movie in so long, Mauricio. I, if, if you're talking about the plot of the film, I have n I, I do not remember. 
So okay. um, I don't. My it's I've only seen that movie once, and it was when I was a little kid. My dad made me watch it. So I remember <laughs> I liked it, but in terms of remembering anything about it, I don't. I do know that it was um, voted like the best movie of all time by the American Film Institute, though. So pretty famous movie. I like. I personally like Gone with the Wind better, but you know. <laughs> So, um, let's see. Can somebody read about take for me? Can I read? Um, who was that? Someone who hasn't read in a while. Uh, me, ma'am. Uh, take. Generally, okay. a take ref refers to the time a shot is begin. To the time it stops. On a film set, a director might have to go through several takes before setting on the shot he or she wants. You or she, or you probably seen this is the film before with the clapboard and someone shouting, take 12, meaning they have done this shot 11 times before this, this one. A totally like short takes also takes a secondary meaning when combined with certain adjectives, in the case long and short. Expect for a long or short take refers to time, whereas a long shot or close shot refers to distance. A short take, for instance, might be one or two seconds long, although contemporary films continue to use shorter and shorter takes, or less than a single second, making two or three seconds, which sounds like a short, am short amount of time, not very short at all. A long take would refers to a single unbroken shot that lasts for a larger Amount of time, 30 seconds or instance. One extremely recently example of long that would be Russian arc, a film shot on digital video and using a single very long take for the entire film. Another more extreme example would be Alf Alfred Hitchcock, Rock, where the director used long takes of several minutes apiece and attempted to hide the cuts but by tracking behind characters' backs bags or pieces of furniture. Some directors are also famous for the use of long takes such as Jean Reno and the Orson Welles. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. yeah so um, take, there's two different meanings. There's, um, you know, a take is the, the uh, what is shot in that, you know, take one and they do it and the director goes, cut, cut, cut. No, yeah. no, no, you know. That's one meaning. The other, the other meaning of take is it's the unit of time. So, for example, in Citizen Kane, like we just watched, that's an example of a long take. That is an unbroken shot. That is not them piecing together bits of dialogue from a bunch of different takes. So they, those men actually stood there and had that conversation for that period of time. Versus in contemporary, because it was a lot harder to cut and splice back then. Whereas these days, with the technology and stuff that we have uh, going on in contemporary films, an actor might say two or three words. You know, it's less than a, less than a second long. And um, they splice it all together into, into a take. But does that make sense? Into a short take. Those are short takes. Long take is when... It's unbroken. It's not little pieces spliced together. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Um. Ah, we're so running out of time, and we still have so much more to go over. Um. Can we can we extend this class for an hour for more for an hour? Yeah, I might have. I might. I might have us do that. Um, you mean for more time, or like in the next class, keep going with this? No, no, more time because these these topics are very, very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Um, I I teach at one, and I've got to get something to eat before then. Um, so I'll hang out for like ten minutes more. So um, I have no problem with that. So let's go ahead and jam through this. Okay, so frame. Somebody read frame for me. Okay, I can do it. Perfect. Perfect. So frame. Uh, literally, a frame of film refers to the smallest unit of film possible. Film frame, sorry, 
fine frames appear on a fine strip, which, when projected, creates the illusion of motion. Film is shown at 24 frames per second. It's very fast. Or FPS, a common abbreviation. Uh, in a much looser sense, scholars sometimes talk about the frame to mean the four sides of the film as it is being projected. And they also often use it as a verb. The film frames the action in such a way that we can see both characters at once. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. So everybody so knows what a, what a frame is, right? It's, you know, it, the, like a film strip, each little square, that's a frame. You can, you can do it with your hands. I can, you know what? I can do it with, on the board. So you have uh, your... I mean that, that, that the, frame, the frame, you can do it with your hands to, to, to make the... To, to, to imagine the scene. Yes? Ah, the frame. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah. No, no frame. So, yeah, so you have, like, the person here, and then they, they're moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are all frames. Okay? Frame by frame. A frame is a photo? It's, uh, it's, not, a, it's not a photo. It's, it's just one snapshot of, of what's going on. So you will see 24 of these in one second worth of film. Celluloid? Is, is, is that the word? Is that, that the again? right word? Celluloid. Celluloid? I have no idea. In Celluloid? Um, I'm not sure. Is, is the, the material what is made of the frames? Oh, 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 oh yes, 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 yeah. I didn't know what it was called. Sorry. Um, yeah, I know film terms. I don't know, like, the technology end of it. Um, yes, yeah. the the strip that you put into the projector that makes the movie go, each square yes. on that on that is on the on the film strip is a frame. Yeah. Yes, and if that's what it's made out of, awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I have no idea what it's made out of, but um, all right, let's keep going. Okay, screen. May I? Yes, please. Okay, screen. Often used with on or off to refer to what you see within your frame. On screen action, for instance, is something you can see 